Good day to you. This is Pastor Joey Pagadora, and this is Senior Moments to Remember. Thank you so much for joining us today. It is a pleasure to have you, and we're looking forward to having a great time with you as we read the Word of God together, pray together, and worship Him. Before we start, we'd like to ask if you have any prayer requests, please type them in the comment section below, and we would love to pray with you. Or if you just want to say hi, let us know where you're at. It would be awesome to hear from you. Let's open in prayer. Father, I lift up to you my brother, I lift up to you my sister, and I pray God that as we come together, even online, and Lord worship you, and just enjoy your presence, I pray God that your spirit will stir them in the insides, quicken their mortal bodies, strengthen them, Lord, fill them with joy, fill them with hope, Lord, lift up their heads, strengthen their bodies, Lord, for our brothers and sisters, for Tata and Nana, you may be not feeling well today. Maybe he or she, God, is right now on her bed. We pray, Lord, walk into that room. Let healing flow. Let touch be upon their bodies, Lord, and let them be restored. Thank you so much for being our Jehovah Rapha, the God who is our healer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's come to the presence of God. And worship him. Good morning. Come and join me in worshiping our wonderful God. Moments to remember. Moments to remember. The branches will flow is like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon. Moments to remember. Moments to remember. And in the house of the Lord, they will flourish in the cause of our God. Never 
Good day to you. This is Pastor Joey and this is your wow moment, wow meaning words of wisdom. And we know that wisdom is important to you because you have lived it. You have proven it. And now you are enjoying the fruit of wisdom in your life. Our wow moment for today is again Psalm 86 verse 15. But you, O Lord, are a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. Yesterday, we were talking about God being merciful. And today, we will be talking about God being gracious. You see, the graciousness of God is one of the things that you will see, you will discover as you immerse yourself into the Word of God. I hope that you are enjoying our 30-day challenge this month. And as you immerse yourself into the Word of God and as you get to know more of God, you get to understand that God is not the God who is bossy. God is not the God who just orders people around with no regard as to who you are, what you are. No. God is a God who is gracious. God is the God who stoops down to make you great. Now, do you remember in the scripture, a man whom God said he speaks with face to face like a friend? That's right, Moses. Moses had a very good relationship with God. He had an intimate relationship with God. And you recall that when God made his goodness pass before Moses, he was going to reveal himself and who he is to him. In Exodus chapter 33, verse 19, and he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you and will proclaim before you my name, the Lord. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. As God was making himself known to Moses, he was not trying to make Moses know about his power, you know, about his might, about everything bowing down to him. God says, I will be gracious to whom I want to be gracious. I want to reveal my graciousness to people. I want to let people taste and see my graciousness. Now, we know later on that Moses did get to see the power of God because of the plagues. We know that later on Moses did get to see the power of God because of the pillar of fire and the pillar of cloud. But Moses also saw equally the graciousness of God. What is the manifestation of God's graciousness? What is one way of how God shows his graciousness? Now, in our evening services, pastors have been talking to us about how to reach out to Christians whose love have grown, has grown cold and we're wanting to talk to them about God. We, we, we are reaching out to them and, and just talk to them about the goodness of God, uh, praying that they will reach the turning point and go back to God. See, when they go back to God, one of the things that they will discover is that God is gracious. He doesn't have mean words to those who are returning to him. He doesn't have painful words, belittling words, embarrassing words to those who will return to him. God has gracious words. He is waiting to show graciousness to them. Second Chronicles chapter 30, verse 9. For if you return to the Lord, this is talking about, let's say again, Christians whose love hath grown cold uh, to God and they are now returning to the Lord. If you return to the Lord, your brothers and your children will find compassion with their captors and return to this land. For the Lord your God is gracious and merciful and will not turn away his face from you if you return to him. So this is one motivation why Christians whose love has grown cold for the Lord, God will be gracious to them. I see at chapter 30 verse 18, therefore the Lord waits to be gracious to you. And therefore, he exalts himself to show mercy to you. So even to those who have strayed, God is gracious. And this is something that we just need to learn. I know that sometimes when our teenagers decided to do what they want to do, they think they're smarter than you are. And they prove themselves wrong. And, you know, they bow their heads. They come back to you. Be like God. Have gracious words. Be like God. Be gracious to them. Those that are returning to the right path. When they have realized that just how wrong they were. When they realized how stupid they were. 
and they are returning. They're making their way back to the straight road. They're making their way back and restoring a relationship with you. Be gracious to them. Be like God. Be like your heavenly Father. Numbers chapter 6, verse 24. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. What a very wonderful thing to say to our family, our friends, and what a wonderful prayer for ourselves that as this quarantine progresses, as this continues and praying that this will end very, very soon, the Lord will continue to bless you, to keep you, and that he will make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. We have a God who is not mean. We have a God who is not bossy. We have a God who is gracious. This has been your one moment. And our prayer for you is that as you continue in wisdom, the days, the weeks, the months, and the years ahead of you will even be more fruitful. God bless you. Moments to remember. Good morning, I'm Pastor Babes. It's time to sing along with me. Come on, let's sing for I will sing it to the Lord. verses 1 to 16 New Living Translation Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God and I trust Him. For He will rescue you from every trap and protect you from deadly disease. He will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. 
Do not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor the arrow that flies in the day. Do not dread the disease that stalks in darkness, nor the disaster that strikes at midday. Though a thousand fall at your side, though ten thousand are dying around you, these evils will not touch you. Just open your eyes and see how the wicked are punished. If you make the Lord your refuge, if you make the Most High your shelter, no evil will conquer you. No plague will come near your home. For He will order His angels to protect you wherever you go. They will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. You will trample upon lions and cobras. You will crush fierce lions and serpents under your feet. The Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. When they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. I will reward them with a long life and give them my salvation. Amen. Moments to remember. Hello po and welcome once again to our memory verse segment. Yes, I know you can do this. Our memory verse for today is found in Romans chapter 8, verse 31. And it says, What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Wow, what a wonderful promise. Amen? Amen. Awesome. And like as always, we will ask one of you to help us out. So for today, we will be getting help from COP Batangas. So let's all welcome Brother Ben Ferrer. Hello po! Hi! Brother Ben, do you think you can do this po? Yes! I can! Awesome! Take it away! Romans 8, 31 What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Wow! That was really, really nice! Thank you so much for Brother Ben. And I know you recited the verse with him, alright? So by now, probably you've memorized the verse because it's really easy for you. So why don't we go to our round one here in Memory Verse segment. Round one, we will remove a few words. And I know you can do this well, right? Okay, here we go. Round one, Romans chapter 8, verse 31. What then, if God, who? Awesome! Thank you so much! Did you get that right, Po? If you got it right, please type got it at the comment section down below. Thank you so much, but we're not done yet. We are now going to round two of our memory verse segment. Round two, we will remove more words, but I know you can do this very well, all right? So here we go, round two. Romans chapter eight, verse 31. What then? If God, who? Awesome! Did you get that right then, Po? Well, if you got that right, please type got it at the comment section down below. Awesome! Well, it's time for us to recite the verse all together with Brother Ben, alright? So, here we go! Romans 8, 31 What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Amen and amen. amen! Thank you so much, Brother Ben, and thank you both for joining us today. Until next time in our Memory Verse segment. God bless you all! Moments to remember 
Good morning everyone, this is Pastor Oin once again for our Say Amen segment. I'm going to share with you Joseph of Arimathea in the New Testament. Joseph of Arimathea played an important role in the burial of our Lord Jesus Christ. In Matthew 27, 57, when it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who also was a disciple of Jesus. In Luke 23, 52-53, Now there was a man named Joseph from the Jewish town of Arimathea. He was a member of the council, a good and righteous man, who had not consented to their decision and actions, and he was looking for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down and wrapped it in a linen shroud and laid him in a tomb cut in stone where no one had ever yet been laid. We can see here, Joseph was a member of ruling council, a wealthy man, a righteous man, and a true disciple of Jesus. And we don't see anything the Bible says that he used his position to compromise his faith. In fact, he was open about it. When Jesus died, he used his influence by asking Pilate for Jesus' body so they can give him a decent burial. Note, that way back then, bodies of criminals who died by crucifixion were considered property by the Roman government. And in this way, the body of Jesus had to be requested. John chapter 19 verse 38, After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly, for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him permission. So he came and took away his body. However, this did not remain the same way. When Jesus died, he overcame all his fears and asked for the body of Jesus. He was a member of the ruling council, but he had not agreed with the decision and actions of other religious leaders. Joseph's eyes and hearts are fixed on the coming of the kingdom of God, more than his religious and political image. Our wealth, image, and status should not be a hindrance to serve Jesus. Other people think if one person died, they have nothing to do with the person. So why give time, effort, and money the person will not see and acknowledge? Despite the fact that all the disciples deserted Jesus when he was arrested and crucified, Joseph boldly asked Pilate to take Jesus' body and give him a decent and honorable burial. Despite of all the possible mockery and disrespect of his fellow Jews and other religious leaders, Joseph chose to honor Jesus with his boldness, looking forward to the coming kingdom of God more than his reputation or more than his fellow religious leaders will say about his stand for Jesus. John 19, 41, Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had yet been laid. What Joseph did will never be forgotten. The place where he had laid Jesus is the same place where Jesus rose to life in power and glory. Living in uncertain time, we might already observe how our family members start to compromise with the pressure of the lockdown. They might be into entertainment which dishonors Jesus. Beloved exemplars, we are to encourage them and be examples for them to follow. Examples in our faith and devotion in Jesus. We must not be satisfied seeing our loved ones grow cold in their love of the Lord. We teach them the word of God and grow in their faith. Loving and honoring God more than anything else because in Him we live and move and have our being. This is your Say Amen segment for the day. God bless you. Hello, I'm Pastor Latin and welcome once again to our prayer time. Thank you so much for always sharing your prayer requests with us. It's always a great privilege to pray for you and see your prayers being answered. So if you could share also your testimonies to us, it would be a great delight. So how do we pray? Fervently and with joy. 
Let us all pray. Heavenly Father, we come before your grace throne today and we are so grateful because we know, O oh God, that you always hear our prayers. You are good, you are gracious, you are merciful. Father, right now we lift up to you, Sister mm -hmm. Fair Regner. Thank you so much, O oh God, for causing her blood pressure to normalize. That, Lord, you will cause Sister Fair to walk from strength to strength all the days of her life in the name of Jesus. Also, God, we commit to you, Sister Annie Lord Abarquez. Thank you, God, for her quick recovery, O oh God. Thank you so much as well for the whole family will always be kept safe and protected from any kind of sickness. Keep them blessed, keep them protected, and thank you, Lord, that no evil shall be allowed to befall them. And Father, for Sister Celia, we commit to you, Lord God, the family of Sister Maricel, her daughter. Thank you, God, for all the negative results of their lab test. Thank you, Lord, for your protection over their family, and even, Lord, for her grandchildren, Maui, Jeremiah, and Rachel. Thank you, God, for keeping them the head and not the tail, that they become honor students in spite of this situation. Lord, continue to give them the grace, Lord God, to adjust in this new normal. And Father, also for Sister Lina, thank you, God, for the fast approval of her visa extension. Thank you for your hand of uncommon favor for her. And also, God, for her grandson, Chubasa. Thank you, God, for completely healing him from this skin allergy. We rebuke it and we declare for complete recovery and quick healing in the powerful name of Jesus. And also, God, for Sister Juliet Ngo, thank you for the complete healing of her friend, Brother Robert Lemeray. Thank you, God, that by your wounds, he has been healed. Wherever he is, Lord, we know that you are reaching out to him and touching his body. And lastly, God, for Sister Reggie, thank you, Lord, for complete healing and causing her, oh God, to have a normal blood pressure. We honor you, God, and we declare for all the answered prayers of your people, because faithful are you who made the promise. She karayan darakoro ropon darasara rapanda. All these things we ask in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for joining us. We would love to see you again tomorrow for another time of prayer. Thank you so much for joining us today. It has been a pleasure to have you. And we're looking forward to having you join us again tomorrow for another episode of Senior Moments to Remember. Before we close in prayer, we'd like again to remind you, if you have any prayer requests, please type them in the comment section below. Or if you have any testimony, anything good that the Lord has done in your life, please share it with us as well. We would love to rejoice with you. Let's close in prayer. Father, I lift up to you my brother, my sister. I lift up to you Tatai and Nanai. And we pray, O oh Father, that your touch will be upon them, that your strength will be upon them, your joy will be upon them. We pray, O oh Lord, that you, O oh God, are going to bless this day and let them be able, Lord, also to just Tell others about your goodness. Tell others about your love. Let them lead somebody, God, to salvation. Thank you, God, that you will use them as a light in their community, in their family, in any way possible. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. And we'll see you tomorrow for another episode of Senior Moments to Remember. Moments to Remember